Hi everyone! Maybe you heard something about the deportation of Ukrainian kids to Russia? Then probably you know who Maria Lvova Belova is. This particular person has uh, illegally transported between 500 and 2,000 Ukrainian children to Russia in 2022. And you know what? We investigated her life, political career and crimes. We found abuse of people with disabilities and orphans, illegal enrichment through charity, death of people under her care, lies about the deportation of children, connections with the Kadyrov and even the establishment of a church for Maria's husband. Recently, Vice aired a video given to an internationally accused of war crimes person a 15-minute possibility to justify herself. In this video, Belova attempts to defend her actions and cleans her reputation. However, it won't help her. She has too many skeletons in her closet. Let's get inside with the all synth agency Molfar. <laughs> Belova grew up in a large family in Penza. In 2002, she completed her studies at the College of Culture and Arts, taking a degree in pop orchestra conducting. Her father was a teacher there. By the way, that one guy was keeping the child pornography on his PC, according to the Cyber Resistance investigation. Nevertheless, after father's college, she entered Penza State Technological University in 2019. Maria Lvova Belova had only a diploma in conducting, but this fact wasn't a problem for her political career. In 2018, she became a regional trusted representative of Putin on the presidential election. Later, Putin will show her his gratitude by appointing her to a position of presidential commissioner for children's rights in Russia. She still holds this position unlawfully, as she didn't have the appropriate education. Maria Lvova Belova has built her reputation on helping children with the disabilities and orphan kids. But this reputation is nothing more than business interests. Belova has been profiting from kids. And of course, she was mean to them. In 2017, Maria became the owner of a non-profit organization to promote social adaptation, namely Quartal Louis. One of the residents of the organization's house, Yevgen Nemtsov, who used a wheelchair, was forced by Lvova Belova to leave. The reason of the conflict is unknown. As a result, he had been staying outside in minus 30 temperature in Celsius or minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit for a long time. He caught pneumonia and died. Also, Belova was the head of the charity center Black from 2008 to 2019. She received almost 3 million rubles by 2014, but she never reported expenses. In 2020, Belova personally closed the center. Belova also owns the inclusive art estate Novi Berega, where, according to the documents, her younger sister works as the manager. Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich also contributed to the financing of this complex, allocating 30 million rubles for its building. The inclusive complex has a cafe where people with disabilities work. However, eyewitnesses report that children with disabilities are mistreated in this cafe. The administration pushes them and shouts, go and do your job. By the way, Belova built a church for her husband on the territory of this estate. Her husband became the priest there. Dom Vereniki is another inclusive project of Maria Lvova Belova. This boarding house was opened in 2017. People who live there are obligated to pay for the work of the curators and for a part of utilities. The project, of course, has no financial records. One of the residents also died due to Belova's fault. In 2020, a young man, Elmir Valiev, died because he didn't receive life-saving dialysis as he couldn't afford a taxi to visit a doctor. Later, it turned out that Elmir had a loan debt of 800,000 rubles. The point is that Maria Lvova Belova pushed residents to take loans. She explained it by saying that people have to pay for their procedures themselves by taking out a loan and repaying it with a disability pension. And now about the abduction of children from Ukraine. 
Madan Yermohin is an orphan kid from Mariupol who was taken by the Russian occupiers first to Donetsk and then to his foster family in Moscow region. In April 2023, he tried to escape from Russia through Belarus to Ukraine, but was caught by the Russian special services. Predictably, Lvova Belova didn't intervene in this process. Of course, to establish herself as a kind-hearted mother, Maria adopted six children and five of them are adults who left Belova. The only foster child who lives with the Russian ombudsman's family is Golovnya Pulip, a Ukrainian boy from Mariupol. Russian propaganda says that Pulip's parents abandoned him after Russia started shelling. In fact, the boy's parents died. It's hard to say how Pilip came to Russia. There is a version that he was taken by the Russian Emergencies Ministry from Mariupol in April 2022, when he came to a supermarket to get humanitarian aid. Then he was taken to occupy Donetsk and then to the Moscow region, to Belova's family. With this accelerated and illegal scheme, Ukrainian children are distributed to Russian families, whether they want it or not. The child distribution system is also sick. The adoption process must take uh, time due to numerous important procedures. In Russia, however, families receive a phone call and then are informed that children from Ukraine will be brought to them within a week. Here is what a woman who has taken custody of four illegally aborted children shares. It feels like mobilization here. They called me and said to come to get children within a week. But how can I just take them immediately? To be honest, for me, seven was already the limit, so it's challenging, of course. Belova actively cooperates with the terrorists and occupiers, which makes her implicated in the crimes. In November 2021, Belova, as a child ombudsman, came to Crimea, which is occupied by Russia. Next year, together with the Ramzan Kadyrov, she agreed to create routes for children with disabilities. At the same time, Patriarch Kirill visited the Novi Berega. In 2023, she received a diploma from the head of the unrecognized DPR, Denise Pushilin, for her services to the homeland. But she denies everything, calling herself just a mom. A mom who will be arrested by the hack. Would you hire Lvova Belova as a babysitter? Then maybe you will vote for her? What about talking to her as to a mom? I guess nothing suits her better than a prison. It was Molfar, thanks for watching and stay safe.